Hello everyone and welcome to Momentum channel. My name is Mo and in this video I want to provide a quick comparison between two major ETFs. One is called X Equity, uh, which is offered by BlackRock and is considered an all-in-one ETF. The other one is a similar type of fund but this one is offered by BMO uh, with ticker symbol Z Equity. You'll be noticing that actually these two funds have a lot in common and uh, the differences are, may not be as much as one would think. Uh, as the name suggests, both of them provide 100% exposure to stock market equities. There's 0% exposure to bonds or fixed income. This is more suitable for investors that have more appetite for uh, a little bit more volatility and believe that by having higher exposure to the stocks, 100% in this case, they're going to reap those benefits over the long um, time. And that's in fact the type of approach that I'm uh, taking for my wife and I. We are 100% exposed to stocks through these high quality ETFs, such as XEquity that we have in our portfolio. Now, uh, looking at the fees for these ETFs, first and foremost, let's just compare things there. The management expense ratio, MER, for XEquity is at 0.20%. And it's exactly the same fee that is charged in terms of the management expense ratio for Z equity. So in terms of the fees, they're exactly the same. If we now look at their distributions, uh, the annual distributions that they have in terms of the yield both of them have very much similar distribution yield uh, granted the distribution yield for z equity is slightly higher uh, currently um, the annual distribution yield is at around 2.3 percent for x equity the annual distribution yield hovers more so closer to i would say two percent even though here on the on the on the site it showcases that it may be closer to one percent or so in reality the truth of the matter is with X equity, the distribution, the amount that they pay changes. Uh, one quarter is higher, the next quarter is lower, then the next quarter goes up, down, and this cycle repeats. But if you look at it in totality and come, do the math, the distribution yields for X equity is closer to that 2%. Nonetheless, it's still slightly less than Z equity. If we look at the time that these funds were incepted, the inception date for X equity goes back, back to August 7th of 2009. 19. Uh, so it's been around uh, more or less for over four years now. Whereas for Z equity, it's definitely been incepted a lot more recently. So if you look at the fund data for uh, for the Z equity, you'd notice that the inception date for that goes back to January 24th of 2022. So it's been around so just less than actually two, two years. Definitely not been around as long as X equity has been, which is kind of reflected in terms of their assets under management, how much fun, funds folks have po put into this, these funds and bought into them. Net, net assets in terms of a um, million dollars for Z equity is around $39 million. Now, if you compare that to the assets under management, the net assets under management for X equity, it's a lot higher at uh, $1.9 billion. Again, very much so attributed to the fact that as well, this fund has been around a lot longer than Z equity and um, it has attracted a lot more investors. And it's offered by BlackRock, which is quite a reputable um, fund manager when it comes to uh, different types of ETFs. In terms of the holdings for X equity, it mainly consists of four other funds, which are all BlackRock funds. And we're going to take a look at them in a moment. The four funds that we are talking about includes ITOT, which is iShares Core S&P Total U.S. Stock Market, uh, which provides you exposure to the entire U.S. stock market through this fund, hovering around that 46% or so. The next uh, other fund as part of X Equity that you get exposure to is XEF. It's uh, MSCI, iShares MSCI, East and Far East IMI Index, which pretty much, as the name suggests, provides you exposure to the international developed market, excluding North America, Canada, and US at around 25%. You have then exposure to Canadian markets through XIC, iShares S&P Toronto Stock Exchange Cap Composite. We get exposure around 24% or so. And lastly, XEC provides you exposure to the emerging market here hovering around that 5% or so. These are the four main funds that are nestled under X equity. So as long as you buy X equity, you're already getting exposure to the underlying four funds as part of that package for the total MER of only 0.20%. Now, as for Z equity, 
The number of underlying funds are slightly higher. If you look at them here momentarily, let's take a look at holdings. Did you see that it shows the total number of holdings is around seven? Um, so let's walk, go through them uh, one by one. This takes into account the cash portion, but we can probably take it out. The main ones are six ETFs that we are talking about. Three of those ETFs gives you exposure to the US market, one to Canadian market, one to emerging market, and one to the international developed market, excluding North America. So the ones that are giving you exposure to US market includes the first one, ZSP, BMO S&P 500 index ETF with around 44% exposure. The next one is BMO S&P US mid cap size index ETF, ZMID, around 2.5%. And lastly, we have ZSML, BMO S&P US small cap index ETF at around 1%. All in all, if you take these into account, you're getting exposure to the US stock market, as you notice from this chart below, around 46%. And if you compare that uh, with that of the Z equity by the different exposure breakdown by ge geographies, for X equity, you're getting very much similar type of exposure, close to that 46%. So both of them give you 46% exposure to the US stock market. Now, if you put these two uh, really head to head, even though with Z equity, you might be thinking, oh, you're getting exposure to S&P 500, small cap, mid cap size. Actually, with X equity, you're getting similar similar type of approach. In fact, through the total U.S. stock market, it does include companies in the S&P 500, companies in Nasdaq, companies in New York Stock Exchange, including some small cap and some mid cap size business as well in the U.S. That's where the U.S. total stock market index comes to, to play. So all in all, when it comes to comparing their exposure to U.S. stock market, very much compar compar comparable and virtually the same. Next, let's take a look at their exposure to Canadian market. With X equity, you're getting approximately 23 to 20, anywhere between 23 to 25% exposure to Canadian markets. With Z equity, uh, very much similar as well, close to that 25% exposure. Maybe may slightly higher than X equity at, at, as it showcases here, at the time that we're looking at them and comparing them head to head, but more or less around that 25% exposure. From there onwards, if you look at the exposure to the international developed market, excluding Canada and US, with Z equity, your exposure is at about 20%. However, with X equity, exposure is slightly higher with XEF. As you see, it's around 25%. Uh, the difference though here is with Z equity, you get slightly higher exposure to emerging markets. So for example, if that's something that interests you, you want to get higher exposure to emerging markets and a little bit less to developed markets, Z equity might be pre preferred in that sense uh, because they provide 8% exposure to emerging markets. Whereas for X equity, through XEC, you get exposure to emerging markets at around 5%. That being said, very much uh, comparable all, all in law. Uh, that s slight percentage change is not going to make things a lot uh, different. And to put things into perspective, you're going to look at the last performance in the recent uh, months that we can compare, actually, the time frame that they were both uh, in operation. So let's go back up to the performance section. I'm going to quickly bring it up for X equity. Let's take a look. I put it by cumulative so that we have an easier comparison, uh, comparability available for us. And if you look at the performance part um, for the two, and let's look at the cumulative portion of it. Yes. If you look at the uh, year to date return, uh, one of them is showing as of September 29th, the other one is of September 30th. Wouldn't matter really because September 30th was actually a Saturday. So the markets were closed. So very much comparable. Year to date for Z equity, it is showing to be up by 7.94% or 7.9. If you round it, it with X equity, very similar, 7.9%. It's a positive gain. One month return for Z equity, it is down by 3.7%. For X equity, it is down by close to 4%. Slightly uh, poorer performance for X equity in this case. Three months return, down 1.6%. With the X equity, it's down 1.7%. Six months return, up 1.5%. Six months return for X equity, up 1.3%. Slightly less performance, poorer performance um, in comparison if you really are very particular with it. And one year, lastly, one year return, 
um, is showing to be 16.6% for X equity. For Z equity is up by 16.4%. So slightly better performance here for X equity when you look at it for one year uh, time period. If you look at the cumulative returns since their inception, uh, they're very much far apart, but understandably so because X, X equity has been around for much longer. That's why since August 7th of 2019, it's cumulative return is still is up by 39.5%, whereas for Z equity, because it was incepted only in January of 2022, the cumulative return for it is 2.3%. One other thing that I want to point out for you is that the fact that uh, for Z equity, there's a lot less asset under management. It has some implication in terms of how much volume um, this fund has when it comes to uh, being bought and sold on the, on the market. So th that's something that we can take a look at it through the average volume. The average volume for X equity is at 77,000 shares, whereas for Z equity is only at around 2,000 shares. Keep that in mind, that impacts when you are trying to buy or sell shares of these ETFs. Uh, the higher volume, the you typically the lower the spread between uh, buy and sell and uh, you know the, the bid and ask price. Both of these funds offer their distributions on a quarterly basis. With all that said, which one I'm leaning towards, I might be biased. As I mentioned, X equity is one of my largest holding in my portfolio. Um, but honestly, I think they are very much similar uh, for the reasons that I indicated in terms of the, having similar fees, very much similar exposure to different markets, as well as very similar distribution yields. I would say they're very much comparable um, and uh, the only reason perhaps that makes me really tilt more towards X equity is a I've already invested in it. I have a really strong uh, position in it, a large position is close to 90% of our, our portfolio is in X equity. But the other key reason would be the fact that it's been established for a longer period of time, uh, has higher, much higher asset on the management. And as a result of that, uh, directly related to that as well is the number of the volume of shares being traded each, each day. Um, which makes it more desirable for, for me in that in that regard. But uh, I, I think that Z equity is also uh, a wonderful fund for those investors that might favor it um, for any of the reasons that we talked about, perhaps maybe if they look for forward to having a slightly higher emerge, exposure to emerging markets. That definitely could be an interesting one. Lastly, before I end the video, I wanted to provide an update in our portfolio where things are at. I'm going back to daily habits of buying uh, shares of X equity in our portfolio. You'd see me definitely on Blossom as you can follow my journey and see how those trades are occurring. If you haven't joined Blossom and if you're in Canada, I do encourage you to do so. I've added the link to download the app and join uh, through my referral link uh, in the description of the video. Since last update about a week ago, our portfolio has gone down because X equity and pretty much the market as a whole has done poorly. You do see now our shares of X equity are, uh, as a whole are down by 6.5%. Our shares of VT, which is a Vanguard Total World Stock Index Fund, is down by 7.4%. And our shares of VTI, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, uh, is down by 3.7%. So across the board, we are down, um, which is why our unrealized loss is showing negative $31,000. This is one of the largest amounts of unrealized loss that we are seeing in this portfolio. But... Honestly, personally, I'm not worried at all about it. And I think this thicker skin probably comes because of the fact that I've been in the market longer for a longer period of time. Uh, perhaps if this had happened several years ago, I would have definitely panicked. But right now I've seen this. I've seen this happen in the past. And I've seen it how nicely it will rebound in uh, when as an investor, you are patient and you're not panicking and you stay uh, focused on your end goal, which is ultimately investing in high quality stocks or ETFs. In my case, I'm investing in high quality, uh, broad market index fund ETFs, and I'm very convinced that this would pay off over a long period of time. And I have so many years still to go until uh, our retirement, even if it's, it would be an early retirement plan for us. I really hope you enjoyed this video and gained something of value from it. Hopefully the comparison between X equity and Z equity was something that was beneficial to you. I was asked about it earlier on on Blossom and I thought, this would be a good time for me to make a video on that and cover that. If you have any other questions and any other topics for future videos that you'd like me to cover, please let me know either on Blossom or on YouTube through comment section. I read through those comments and provide my response as soon as I get to them. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you 
next time on another video here on Momentum Finance.